Hello, my name is John Brisson, author of Fix Your Gut and Health Coach. Welcome to the Fix Your Gut YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about uh, three foods that everybody loves that may make their heart burn or GERD, which stands for gastroesophageal reflux disease, worse. Um, so one of the foods that we're going to talk about in this uh, YouTube video is chocolate. Now I love my chocolate. I'm a chocolateaholic. Uh, back in the day it used to trigger a really bad silent reflux for me. Um, so when you go through a list of foods that are commonly, you know, put on when you go online of foods you should avoid when you have reflux or are suffering from GERD, uh, chocolate easily makes the list. So is it some truth to that? Could chocolate make your reflux worse? Well, there are some evidence that some of the compounds that are in chocolate uh, may reduce uh, the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter, which is the sphincter that opens and closes to allow food in and to allow gas out of the stomach. It's at the part where the esophagus connects to the uh, stomach. And when that is relaxed and you have more pressure, like gas or bloating from bacterial dysbiosis or other organism dysbiosis too, um, it can cause reflux to come up, which is what the feeling of, you know, GERD is and so chocolate contains you know many polyphenols which are fermentable uh contains caffeine and uh, theobromine um and you know people who ingest uh chocolate and they have SIBO for example which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth syndrome um the polyphenols in chocolate could be fermented they could produce a lot of gas especially if you have a uh, SIBO with hydrogen ba dominant based uh, bacterial overgrowth um, and in doing so, that could put more pressure on the stomach, which would weaken the LES, which would trigger reflux. Um, caffeine in it itself has been uh, studied and confirmed that it is able to weaken the LES in multiple studies, um, as well as uh, theobromine. Both of them uh, reduce LES function. They relax the LES because they are smooth muscle relaxers. So chocolate can be the perfect storm to cause reflux. Um, it, you know, it's just theobromine and the caffeine are smooth muscle relaxers that are in the chocolate. They relax the lower esophageal sphincter. The chocolate is later, um, fermented, uh, by bacteria or yeast within the gut. They produce gas by product fermentation. And in doing so, you get bloating, you get abdominal distension, and the acid moves up. Um, one last thing too is, is, is finally that, you know, Chocolate consumption also increases serotonin, uh, released within the intestinal tract, which serotonin in itself is also known to relax the LES to trigger reflux too. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's not necessarily the fat content in chocolate that causes the reflux. There have been studies that the cocoa butter itself, when ingested, didn't really trigger reflux. But when you eat chocolate in the whole combined package it does now there's some people who may get re, you know bile reflux um from ingestion of cocoa butter because it is you know highly fat so they have issues with bile and then that can happen yes um but it just generally doesn't cause acid reflux so the verdict on chocolate is though it is super delicious and i love it and many people love it out there it does worsen reflux for many many people um, the next food that we have are onions. When you go look on these lists, you'll see onions. They'll be marked on foods that trigger reflux. Um, onions are very high in fructans, which is a FODMAP. We know FODMAP, the F stands for fructans, so the complex fructose uh, molecules. And there's a lot of inulin in, 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 in onions. So, you know, they're very fermentable in the gut. A lot of people react very negatively when they have SIBO. Uh, the bacteria are able to break down and, and, and ferment the fructans and produce a lot of gas. And in doing so, they get a lot of bloating and a lot of pressure. So, it's, it, it also seems to be that it may be the raw onions. It may be the raw onions, because when you cook onions, they do it does change the fructan structure. It does release, it breaks them down into more simple sugars. So for some people who have intolerance to onions, it could be strictly from raw and not so much from cooked. Um, and you know, onions also do contain a lot of sulfur. So many people with hydrogen sulfide dominant overgrowth, 
and they ingest onions that can cause them to have a lot of bloating because more hydrogen sulfide is produced because there's a lot of sulfurous compounds in onions um so you know people with hydrogen sulfide they may get reflux overgrowth dysbiosis especially in the upper gut and they get reflux from the onions the bacteria producing a lot of sulfur a lot of gas a lot of bloating a lot of burping and belching and that can cause uh reflux symptoms uh, too as well uh, so there are many different reasons why onions cause reflux. So the verdict on it is somewhat true. It is somewhat true, somewhat true that onions can worsen reflux, especially raw onions. Maybe some people can tolerate cooked onions with less issues, especially if you're not suffering from hydrogen sulfide dominant uh, overgrowth. And instead, you're just dealing with normal hydrogen dominant or methane dominant SIBO. You might be able to tolerate cooked onions. Um, the third and last food that we're going to talk about is mint. Now, I am a huge fan of peppermint. I think peppermint is delicious. I love the taste. I love the cooling sensation of menthol. And it has a lot of medicinal benefits and antimicrobial benefits too as well. Like in terracotta peppermint oil that I did a previous video that I'll link in the show notes about. So mint does have its positive properties. Menthol also is a pain reliever too. Um, so, but there is an issue with mint as far as digestion is concerned. Menthol weakens the lower esophageal sphincter because it's a smooth muscle relaxer, just like caffeine and theobromine are. Uh, menthol blocks the voltage sensitive sodium channels in the neuromuscular junction, and in doing so, it relaxes the muscles and, and, and it can reduce muscle spasms, which wise works very well for people with SIBO, with uh, of hydrogen dominant SIBO, which usually tend to have diarrhea. So, it, you know, it, it does reduce intestinal contractions but also weakens the sphincters too and that's a problem with people with reflux um so you know though menthol has properties for certain issues like if you have SIBO with diarrhea and you're not dealing with reflux and you probably want to take a terracotta peppermint oil if you are dealing with reflux you want to take a terracotta peppermint oil because the terracotta keeps it breaking down in the stomach so it doesn't relax the smooth muscle of the LES so much um but for most people there's there's a couple of things it it relaxes a smooth muscle mint can be irritating itself um especially which is a different type of mint but spearmint which doesn't really have any menthol in it it's been known to irritate the esophageal lining it doesn't change the les pressure because it it doesn't have any menthol uh, like peppermint does, but it does seem to irritate the throat in some, in some people as well. Uh, so, you know, like I said, menthol also can hinder proper esophageal peristalsis through smooth muscle relaxation. Uh, so that's why it helps people with a condition called aclasia, uh, because it's, you know, people with aclasia, they have very erratic esophageal muscle movements, and their LES can become stuck and refuse to open, so food gets trapped in their esophagus where menthol tends to weaken the esophagus and the lower esophageal sphincter. And in doing so, people with aclasia may be able to swallow their food better and may be able to go down without them regurgitating their food. So what is the verdict on mint? Mostly true, again, just like the other foods. Mint does seem to cause reflux for many people, um, and it causes many reflux symptomology because of that. Uh, usually, if someone's dealing with reflux and they want to, like, or they're dealing SIBO with uh, diarrhea SIBO or SIBO with hydrogen dominant bacteria, and they want to use uh, peppermint oil to reduce the spastic of their colon, I usually recommend a terracotta peppermint oil so that it does not cause any weakening of the LES and cause them to uh, reflux. So, to recap, I do not recommend the ingestion of people with reflux with foods that contain. Um, Caffeine, you know, but mainly chocolate. Chocolate is both fermentable, it contains polyphenols that are fermentable, it contains caffeine and theobromine, which both relax the um, LES, and it also increases serotonin production, which in and of itself weakens the LES. Um, onions, raw onions usually cause the most problems. Cooked onions, some people can tolerate them, unless they have hydrogen sulfide dysbiosis, and most of the people with that are sensitive to theols, cannot tolerate onions. Um, and mint. Most people with reflux cannot tolerate mint because menthol relaxes the LES. They, peppermint. They may not be able to tolerate spearmint because it does not relax the LES so much uh, like peppermint does, if any at all. But spearmint itself can be caustic to the esophagus for some people, and it may 
increase the reflux symptoms. So those three foods should be avoided in people with GERD or people even generally with reflux sometimes. Um, if you liked this video and found it informative, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day.